post-perihelion, three eye atlas bends, a small course change, a five-fold green glow, fragments of mass stripped by fire. The data from NASA and the Minor Planet Center say it plainly. 13% gone, orbit slightly off, simple numbers. Yet behind them, a question that won't fade. What pushed it? We call it non-gravitational acceleration, but that phrase hides the poetry of what it means. Maybe something we don't yet name, nudged an interstellar visitor off its line. It touched the sun and came back different. Most say it's normal. Ice sublimates, gas escapes, jets fire, and the orbit shifts. But when a traveler from another star changes direction after touching ours, normal feels like denial. After the sun, three I Atlas drifts. And in that drift, silence speaks louder than the fire ever did. When an object like 3i Atlas dives toward the sun, it enters a crucible of light. At perihelion, that thin, merciless point where distance dies, everything it carries begins to unravel. The frozen gases that held it together awaken, boiling into invisible streams. Ice becomes vapor, carbon and dust tear away. Molecules that slept for billions of years ignite for a few seconds and vanish. A comet doesn't simply survive perihelion, it transforms through it. For 3i Atlas, that moment was violent but brief. When it reached the closest approach, the sun stripped part of its outer layers clean. Telescopes lost it to the glare. It disappeared into brightness itself, but when it came back into view, the numbers whispered what the eye couldn't see. It was lighter, roughly 13% of its mass, gone, evaporated into a cloud of nothing. And yet, despite being smaller, it moved differently, slightly off course, just enough to make the instruments notice. The light it reflected also changed. Observers saw a five-fold surge in the green band, a spectral flare produced by molecules like diatomic carbon and cyanogen. That shade of green is the color of comets in pain, the sign of a nucleus shedding its skin. Atlas was no longer the same traveler that entered the inner solar system months earlier. The heat had altered its body, and with it, its destiny. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory and the Minor Planet Center confirmed what the data implied. A subtle acceleration, roughly 94 kilometers per second per day, not explained by gravity alone. This kind of motion is known. It's the gentle push of gas jets erupting unevenly across a comet's surface. Imagine tiny thrusters firing in silence, shifting an entire world by the weight of vapor. That's how small forces change the shape of space. The phenomenon has a name, non-gravitational acceleration. But the term hides the poetry of it. What it means is simple. Something unseen pushed it. Not gravity, not impact, but breath. The exhale of a frozen object melting in sunlight. A quiet propulsion written into the chemistry of its ice. And yet, there's something haunting in this pattern because 3 I Atlas isn't one of ours. It doesn't belong to the solar system. It came from elsewhere, a place beyond any orbit, maybe ejected from a dying star, long before our sun even formed. When it crossed our sky, it carried memories of another gravity, another history, another kind of silence. So when we say it changed course, maybe we're not just talking about mechanics. Maybe we're witnessing the echo of something ancient, drifting through light for eons, now gently rewritten by a star that wasn't its own. After the fire, 3 I Atlas drifts onward, lighter, altered, silent, no longer the same traveler. Maybe that's how everything that touches the sun ends up, not destroyed, but changed. They called it a small deviation, just a faint curve in a line that should have stayed straight. But in astronomy, small changes often mean big questions. The slightest shift in a trajectory can rewrite the future of an entire system. Something invisible pushed 3i Atlas, something that the clean geometry of gravity couldn't explain. The data spoke quietly, but it spoke of movement that shouldn't exist, a world that no longer followed the math we trusted. When Avi Loeb looked at those numbers, he recognized the pattern. He'd seen it before, years ago, in Oumuamua, the first visitor that made humanity wonder if we were really alone. He knew what the backlash felt like, the ridicule, 
the whispers of arrogance, but curiosity, for him, is heavier than pride. So he looked again. The acceleration of 3i Atlas, about 94 kilometers per day, matched the signature of gas jets, yes, but something in its magnitude, in its rhythm, hinted at complexity. He wrote that it was consistent with natural activity, but he also left the door open because consistency is not proof. NASA and the Minor Planet Center confirmed the same drift, labeling it as non-gravitational acceleration. The term itself feels mechanical, as if naming it makes it less mysterious. But the truth is simpler and stranger. Something pushed it, softly, persistently, as if the void had wind. If Atlas lost so much mass after perihelion, there should be evidence. A coma of dust and gas, a glowing envelope around its shrinking core. And soon, the James Webb Telescope will look again, scanning the region where it hides in the sun's afterglow. If that cloud is there, the case closes. It's a comet, behaving as comets do. But if it isn't, then we are once again standing in the same quiet corridor as we did with Oumuamua, listening for an echo that never comes. Two objects from beyond our system, both behaving in ways that shouldn't surprise us, yet somehow still do. Maybe it's coincidence. Maybe it's a pattern. Maybe it's us, desperate to find meaning in the noise. Most astronomers remain cautious. They remind us that nature is chaotic by design, that comets are dirty, fractured, unpredictable things. Gases vent unevenly. Ice pockets explode. Light pressures distort their paths. All of it can mimic intention. The cosmos doesn't need intelligence to act strangely. But still, beneath that logic, there's discomfort, a feeling that we're missing something hidden between the decimals because every data set ends the same way, with a small remainder, a residue of uncertainty. And it's that residue that keeps us watching, that keeps us awake. A small push, unseen, a drift, unplanned. It could be physics, it could be something more. The truth doesn't always shout. Sometimes, it moves quietly through the dark, changing course without ever telling us why. When something not from here bends its path after touching the sun, we can't help but wonder, was it just heat or intention? random chance, or a message written in motion? The sun never rests. It coils in silence, storing its rage until the next eruption splits the calm. On November 4th, it broke again. Two colossal flares, Class X, the strongest kind known. For a few minutes, the upper air of Earth trembled. Radio waves bent, GPS signals died, the magnetic skin of our planet vibrated like a string pulled too tight. NASA called it normal. NOAA called it moderate. But normal doesn't mean safe. It means we've learned to forget how fragile we are. Every pulse from that star crosses 90 million miles and still manages to shake the invisible architecture of our world. And while those flares tore through space, 3 eye Atlas drifted on the sun's far side, caught in that storm of light. Post-perihelion, it moved through radiation and plasma, through the noise of a living star. We like to call space empty, but it isn't. It's full, full of movement, pressure, static. The solar wind, invisible but endless, touches everything. Maybe that's all it took. A whisper of heat, a flicker of magnetism, and an interstellar traveler changed direction. Some say it's just physics, outgassing, thermal jets, a perfect explanation, but explanations aren't always the end of mystery. Sometimes they're just the door that opens to a deeper one because what happened to Atlas is what happens to everything that meets the sun. It loses something. It changes course. It becomes lighter, smaller, different. The sun writes its story into every orbit, every particle, every drifting speck that dares to pass close. And somehow that story always ends the same way, with silence. Maybe that's what connects us to it. We too are shaped by invisible waves, forces we don't fully see, pulling us, bending us, rewriting our paths. The same star that strips comets bare warms our skin, powers our world, decides our seasons. It is both creator and destroyer, both the light that makes life possible and the fire that burns it away. The sun breathes, 
the object bends, the signal falters, the universe hums quietly between them. And somewhere in that noise, we keep listening, hoping to find meaning in a language of radiation and drift. Maybe there's no message at all, no intention, just motion, the endless rearrangement of matter and heat. But it feels like something more, because when something not from here touches our sun and comes back changed, it reminds us that transformation is the only constant. Three, I Atlas continues to drift, lighter now, scarred, reflecting a star that nearly erased it. It will fade soon, disappear into deep space, and we'll be left again with the same silence, the same question. If the universe can bend a traveler's path with nothing but light, what else is it bending right now without us noticing? If you want to keep listening to the dark, stay here, subscribe, leave your trace, your small light before you go. Because in the end, that's all we ever are. Fragments drifting after the sun.